Murphys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you've been here before, welcome back, welcome back. What's up, what's up? I have some exciting news to share with everyone. Are you ready? I got my domicile. Whoop, 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 whoop. So let me tell you where I'm based. Let me tell you what it all means. And I'll let you know what happens next. So before I tell you where I'm based, I'm going to give you a little bit of information on a domicile. So a domicile is your base. It is the airport that you will fly in and out of to start your trips and then to end your trips. So even if you have a three-day trip, you're going to start in your domicile or your base. You're going to fly for three days, have some layovers. Then you're going to return back to your domicile. You may have a day off or two. You may be starting another trip the next day. You may be starting your reserve bucket. Who knows what happens when you get back it, the sky's the limit but your domicile is where you start and end your trips now for me i am now a chicago-based flight attendant oh 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 so yes your girl's heading out to chicago i'm leaving maryland behind but let me give you the inside scoop on when i got my base and all that good information because i know before i got this information i was out there like when am i gonna find out when i'm gonna know blah 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 so let's get into it so a most asked question that is out there is when did you receive your domicile assignment so friday july 30th is when i graduated from initial higher training that following friday which was august 6th is when i got the email notifying me of my domicile placement so they pretty much just send you an email you'll know it's the email because the subject line will say this is the email right so they pretty much just put your name on there and they let you know where you're going to be based they do not give you your ioe dates when they give you your domicile and for me i got my domicile after graduation okay so next let's talk about how you know where you're going to get assigned what places are options and all of that so for me in training we had to create a list of our most desired domicile to our least desired domicile so you pretty much you put them in order from where you want to be to where you least likely want to be for me chicago was number three on my list and in my class i had a pretty high seniority so i knew that i would probably get my one of my top five i do not remember my entire list but i know my number one was houston my number two was dallas my number three was chicago my number four four i want to say was maybe phoenix or denver they kind of rotated like four and five i had seattle was like number six so on and so forth so you kind of get the gist of creating a list so as i mentioned chicago was number three on my list and how it works is they look at each person's list in seniority order and then they look at what bases they can send new hires to and then from there if you're high up on the seniority list you'll probably get some of your top picks if they are sending new hires there now if your top of the list is a lot of senior bases that they usually don't send new hires to then you're not gonna get the top of the list i did a lot of research on this because i noticed that there was somewhat of a trend on where they send new hires now don't get me wrong the word on the street which is very much true is that the aviation world is always changing so these places where they send new hires they may not always be sending them there if that makes sense things change month by month but with the trend that i was seeing i knew that i was going to get like one of seven bases so let me tell you what those bases are and then i'll go into how i ended up making my list the way that i did so for this year i noticed that they were sending a lot of new hires to these particular bases and again this is just based off on the 2021 data that i had so i built my list somewhat around there because i knew more than likely i would get sent to one of these bases so the bases are chicago denver salt lake city boise minneapolis San Francisco, Seattle, and a couple people did go to Colorado Springs. So those bases are the ones that I noticed that were trending for getting a lot of new hires straight out of training. So when I was creating my list, I still put like my top two choices where I wanted to go at the top of my list because like I said, everything is always changing. But I also filtered these 
specific locations in there because I knew more than likely I would get sent to one of those bases. So using the information that I had, I, when I when I created my list, I put Houston and Dallas because that were my first two choices. And then I looked at, okay, out of those bases that they usually send new hires to, where would I want to go? Chicago is next on the list because it's the closest place to home for me in Maryland. So I was like, okay, that could be an easy drive to like move my stuff and all of that good stuff. So I was like, okay, I could do Chicago. Like Chicago has a nice youthful population so I could fit in there and I could see myself living there. So I added Chicago to the list and I knew, and I went, like when making my list, I knew that there was a high possibility that, that I would end up in Chicago because they weren't sending new hires to Houston or Dallas. For me being high up in my class, having that seniority and knowing the trend, I put Chicago there knowing that more than likely I would get sent there and I did. Then I just used the rest of the list and I just kind of, I didn't really go based off of the specific places where they were sending people. Like I didn't put them all in a row back to back. I still filtered in places where I would want to live with those places. But my next desirable place from this list, I did put closer up because if they for some reason stopped sending new hires to Chicago next on my list I believe was Denver which is another hot spot is what I like to call it for new hires so I put Denver high up because that was the second best place where they send new hires where I would be okay going if that makes sense um so that's pretty much how I made my list and then you just go in and you list it and then you just wait for them to tell you where you're gonna go but Moving on from that, I'm super excited about Chicago. I've been having a little bit of trouble finding somewhere to live, but I definitely found some decent crash pads that I'm going to go check out and hopefully that they all work out. At first, I was so anti-crash pad because I'm like, I don't want to live with a bunch of people. I don't want to, you know, have people touching my stuff and in my personal space. But I actually found some good ones that I think will work out. The nice thing about a crash pad is it's kind of worry free. So for the ones that I found, they're semi private rooms. Um, they are at a decent price. It's like four or $500 a month. And for some people, that's a lot. But for me, um, it's definitely attainable. It's an attainable budget, but you don't have to worry about anything. You pay your money, you have a bed, you have some storage space, I have some closet space. And you know, I can put any additional items that don't fit in those spaces. I can put them like in a storage space facility I am taking my car with me to Chicago because I don't know what else I would do with it honestly and I'm still paying for it so if I'm paying for it I might as well drive it if that makes if that makes sense so yeah I'm gonna try the crash pad life another benefit to a crash pad is that most of them don't require like a long-term lease so when you're ready to go you can get up and go so let's say you put in a transfer which is something I plan on doing because I do want to go to the south with nice warm weather <laughs> so if I do put in a transfer and I end up getting my transfer I don't have to worry about breaking a lease with an apartment or anything like that so I'm really strongly considering a crash bed I do have some other options that I'm also looking into as far as housing so just fingers crossed and I'm really trying to find some housing before I get my IOE dates I will definitely update you guys when I get my IOE and all that information because it's definitely it's definitely a trying process you know just waiting for it and being so anxious for it but also trying to make sure I'm still retaining all of that information that I need for my IOE while trying to find somewhere to live in Chicago while trying to sell my house in Maryland like your girl has a lot going on so it's pretty much what I've been doing in the waiting time um, I did take my first non-rev trip which was kind of disastrous so be on the lookout for that video because wait till I give you that tea. Whew, I almost got stuck in a couple different places but I made it. I survived. I'm still here. But yeah so I got my domicile. I'm based in Chicago. Again it was my number three choice. I put it at number three knowing that more than likely I was going to get that choice. The way I made my list may not work out for you because of where your seniority may fall in your class so that's a lot of things to consider. Um, consider living expenses when you pick your domicile. I didn't really think that through when I'm picking Chicago because it is a super expensive place to live if you want to live alone. So keep that in mind.
for all places really um do some pre-research what places have lots of crash pads what places don't have a lot of crash pads chicago is expensive but they do have a nice plethora of crash pad options as well as like rental properties um it just it just all comes down to your budget and what you're willing to pay and what you're willing to deal with but I think that's all of the information I have for you. If you have any additional questions about my domicile placement or anything like that, please don't hesitate to drop a comment down below. I love getting all of your great comments and I will answer as many as I can. Like I said before in, all, in my previous videos, I'll answer as many as I can and as appropriately as I can without, you know, crossing any boundary lines if you get my dress. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this video and hit that notification bell so you are notified whenever I post some lovely videos because I have some great content coming your way. That's all I have. Bye and I'll see you in my next video.